Hi everyone, my name is Ben and today we're going to be talking about the recently published Oxford vaccine trial that has been trending right now on social media and on news websites about showing very very promising results of the study and I actually had the time to sit down and read the entire 13 page research article that was published in The Lancet which is one of the most recognizable medical journals out there and there are some really really good things about this study that media is really showcasing but there are also a lot of drawbacks and a lot of things that can be approved on in this study and something that I really appreciated about the researchers is that they were very very transparent about the drawbacks of the study and future directions of that study. So we're going to talk about the pros, cons, and future directions and what this really means in the broad scale of the COVID-19 pandemic. So in this study that was conducted in the United Kingdom, they recruited about 1,000 patients to undergo vaccination. About 500 patients were given the COVID-19 vaccine and another 500 patients were given the meningitis vaccine as a control. Most of these patients were between the ages of 18 to 55 years old. They were generally healthy with no underlying health conditions. They were generally younger and they had to have had, had a negative COVID-19 result to be added to the study. Of the about 500 patients that were taking the COVID vaccine, all of them got an initial shot of the vaccine, but 10 patients were singled out and given a second booster shot after about a month, 28 days after this. And this study was conducted in five different clinical sites in the UK. Out of those five, two of those spots allowed their patients to take paracetamol, also known as Tylenol or acetaminophen in the United States before they began administering the vaccine. So two of those sites allowed that. Most of the patients were completely blind to the researchers, which means that uh, researchers did not know the identity of the patients giving the vaccination trial. They were given their data, their demographics, but not their identity. However, for 10 of those patients that received the second booster shot, they, do, they did know the identity of those patients because of the fact that because they got the booster shot, they wanted to make sure that they were monitored as frequently as possible so that if any adverse effects were to happen, they would be ab immediately able to give them medical treatment. The way that this vaccine was administered to the patients was a single intramuscular shot right to the deltoid, which is the shoulder, very similar to how the flu vaccine works here in the United States. So the way this vaccine works is that scientists looked at other research studies that have been doing vaccination trials and decided to take the best of all worlds essentially. So what they did is they isolated the spike protein which is on the outer co coating of the coronavirus itself that attaches to your cells and it allows it to fuse into your cells and that's how it ends up you know destroying your cells and causing all the respiratory and systemic problems within your body so they isolated that spike protein and then they combined it with a adenovirus vaccine which is a virus that has been around for a very long time many people get vaccinated for it including children and mil military recruits so they combined it with the adenovirus um, vector which is a uh, piece of DNA uh, so they combined it together and the reason why they specifically use adenovirus is because adenovirus has shown to have very strong antibody and T-cell responses to immunity. And what that means is that the way that our body fights viruses and infections is via two methods. One is called cell-mediated T-cells and one other one is called humoral B-cells which produces antibodies. So the T-cells are actually doing a lot of the initial primary work where they recognize the virus or infective agent and then they learn how that virus works and they also learn how to kill it and they learn about if we were to get reinfected how we would fight together in the body to get rid of this virus so the t-cells are the primary initiators of getting immune to an infective agent. So what the T cell does afterwards, after you've gone through your initial infection phase, it tells, it memorizes things. So then when you are reinfected, your B cells will then 
create antibodies. Those antibodies will then make it much more efficient to kill off that virus later on if you ever get reinfected or you ever happen to come across it. So this is the way the virus vaccine works is that their initial goal is that once you get the vaccine, your T cells will recognize the protein coat, that coat spike protein of COVID-19. It will learn how to fight that coat spike coat protein and then tell your B cells how to fight that spike protein. It makes a lot of good sense. A lot of vaccines are done this way. So this is not a completely new methodology um, that hasn't been used for. It's been used for many vaccines in the past. Unlike some of the vaccines out there that are being tested right now currently, which is using a new method called mRNA, which uses uh, little segments of DNA to elicit an immune response, which is a newer method. We don't know a lot of information about its safety profile. So because of the fact that they use older methods to develop this vaccine, we have more confidence on its safety profile. And we'll be talking about the side effects that the patients got after. As far as the effectiveness of this vaccine, the results are really good right here. So by, the, by day 14, most patients, almost all the patients develop cellular responses to the virus, which means we were making our T cells work against that spike protein. Very, very good news. Almost every single patient was doing that. And people who received the second booster shot, they followed them and they found out that almost every single one who received the booster shot developed antibodies against the virus. Now this is a brand new trial. We don't know whether or not patients do actually need to get a booster shot because if your T cells are fighting against that virus on day 14 when you get one shot, that means your T cells will probably over time learn how to fight that virus. So as of right now, we don't know if people actually need that second booster shot, but we did see good results with the booster shot as well. However, we don't know the safety profile of getting that second boost, long-term safety profile of what that second booster shot will do to patients. However, very, very exciting news. They are getting very positive results, which with long-term studies can really show that people are developing immunity to COVID-19, but also being generally safe. So as far as the side effects, the most common ones were fevers, chills, muscle aches, pain, tenderness at the injection site, feeling bad, which is called malaise, feeling bad overall. And they saw really promising things with the groups that used acetaminophen right before they took the vaccine. They saw all of those symptoms were reduced if they took Tylenol before it, which isn't alarming per se, but it, are, but it is side effects that can affect older populations much more severely than younger populations. Remember that this study looked at particularly younger patients that are healthy with no other comorbidities, which means that older patients and younger patients might react differently to these side effects, especially when it comes to older people being able to be less tolerant of these side effects, which is something that the researchers, which I really appreciate, really honed in on during their discussion, saying that we actually need to see how this vaccine affects older generations. Another really good thing is that people who received the booster shot, the second dose of the vaccine, did not, did not get any of those side effects in the second booster shot. I do want to emphasize that most of these side effects were very mild, but there were a small number of patients that got severe side effects from them, but none of them were severe enough for hospitalization or being fatal. So some of the major drawbacks for this study. One is that the researchers were very, very transparent in saying that 90% of their recruits were white, which means that there is a demographic misrepresentation in this trial, which means, yes, a lot of people will argue, yes, all bodies are the same, but actually there are racial variances in how people tolerate vaccines and people tolerate medicines. So there needs to be a widespread, diverse group a diverse cohort of patients in order for us to see the effectiveness and side effect side effect profile of this vaccine. We need to have more black and brown bodies. We need to have people that are non-white being a part of this trial. And hopefully that's the direction they're gonna go in follow-up studies. 
They also want to emphasize again, they primarily looked at healthy people. They want to see how this affects people with chronic illnesses, people with diabetes, people with hypertension. So that's pretty much the rundown of this study. Very, very promising. The researchers are going to follow up with these patients for an entire year and see how they're doing and they're hoping to expand the study to a lot more participants um, representing a wide diversity of patients out there and I hope you guys like this video I hope you enjoyed um, the content of this video if you would like to follow me on social media I have an Instagram and Twitter where I talk about my daily life and talking about medical advocacy Please like, share, subscribe to this channel if you found my content interesting enough, and I'll see you on the next one. Mwah. This is Ben.